video, I'm going to explain the changes to the Weather for College Travel Procedures and Travel Request Form. Weather for College Travel Procedures have been amended and are being implemented retroactively to January 1, 2019. You will notice that meals and lodging rates have been revised to reflect current GSA, or General Service Administration, rates. To help you understand how that affects your reimbursement, there's been a number of notes that have been added to the actual form itself, as well as a tab for meals and a tab for lodging to help you find those GSA rates. Let's begin with lodging and a location inside Texas that is commonly visited. For example, Austin. Austin, I would locate the row that Austin is on. It is in Travis County, which has a special rate of $160 in March and a seasonal rate of $145 in April. So you need to locate both the location as well as the month to see the seasonal rate that applies to your travel. These rates are good for any city in, or town inside that county. If you do not know what county your location is in, you can go to the GSA website and look it up, and I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do that. So I have that website at the top of the page. This is the gsa.gov travel website, and when you click on it, it's going to take you to the website where you can look it up a number of ways. One way is if you ha know the zip code, for example, if I'm traveling to Marble Falls and I don't know what county Marble Falls is in, I can just type in the zip code I have for Marble Falls. I click find rates. And if there's a special county rate, then uh, we'll see that listed below the standard rate. Marble Falls happens to be inside Travis County, which means I can use the Austin travel rates. Again, locate the month. And if I was traveling in, in April uh, to Marble Falls, I can uh, use uh, the $145 GSA travel rate for lodging. Another way to look things up, uh, here you can pick the state, put the town. For example, I'm going to Tyler, Texas. I click on find rates here. A, a special county de rate does not appear, which means I'm going to have to use the standard rate which is not seasonal of $94. The final way to look things up on this website is, let's say you're traveling to another state, you could click on, say, Nevada and see what places there has special rate. Of course, as you would expect, Las Vegas has a special rate above the standard rate of $94. I would again find my date of travel. If I was traveling in March, it would be 130, April 102. So once again, the same thing applies if you if you put in a city in a town uh, or town in a state and another county comes up, you can use that county rate because it applies to any town or city in that county. Let's return to the lodging tab and let me point out two important notes. If the conference is held at a hotel, that hotel lodging rate will be allowed. And if two employees share a hotel, each one may claim either half the double occupancy hotel rate charged or up to the allowed GSA per diem rate below for one person. If you have any questions regarding this, do not hesitate to contact Purchasing Office to, in advance of your travel to get your questions answered. Next, let's talk about meals and incidentals, M&IE. Before I begin explaining MNIE, one important change has occurred, and that is that meals require an overnight stay, and you may only claim 75% of an MNIE daily rate on your first day of travel and your last day of travel. Let me pull up an example to explain this further. Let's say you're traveling to Austin. Austin has a MNIE daily rate of $61. 75% of that is $45.75. So on day one, I put the $45.75. My full day, $61. My uh, return day, $45.75 for a grand total of $152.50. If it was a two-day event, I would put just the, fir the first day amount and last day amount for a total of $91.50. Now let's go look up some of those MIE rates. 
for example, if I was going to Dallas, I can look up Dallas here and I see the MNIE rate of $66 is listed and we've already calculated the 75% for you of $49.50. Furthermore, I have a handy dandy little calculation that you can do on the right hand side to help you figure out based on your days of travel, number of days you are traveling, what your total MNIE will, reimbursement will be. So for Dallas, uh, my full day amount, I'm going to start there, is $66. My half rate, my 75% rate, excuse me, is $49.50. So I enter $49.50, $49.50, because I've got, I'm going there at least uh, two days. If I was going just two days, my grand total would be $99. If I had one full day in there, because this is a three-day attempt, I put the one in here and it would calculate and add that $66 to my previous amount. Again, if it was two days, it would calculate two days. Two full days and your first and half and last day. So this is a handy little calculation that'll help you figure out your grand total for your MNIE. Again, put your first day rate, your last day rate, the full rate, and the number of full days. If you had no full days, you could put zero there, and again, it would just give you your first and last day rate. The next major change to discuss on MNIE is if a meal is being provided by the place that you are the event that you are attending, that meal must be reduced, must reduce your amount of reimbursement by the rate for that meal for that location. So let's take for example you're at that uh, three-day event and in Dallas and both days they provided a box lunch. Uh, and you're going to go to meal one and go to Dallas and locate your uh, lunch rate is $17 and the second day they provided another lunch and then you came home on the third day. So the grand total for those two lunches that they provided is $34 and you can bring that amount over here and see and plug in that amount in the meals provided location. To this end, upon return, a copy of the business agenda is requ required to determine if any meals were provided by the venue. Once again, returning to the Meals tab, you can find MNIE at the same website, the gsa.gov, for other cities and uh, locations outside of Texas. Clicking again on the website, you would look up the uh, state and city or the zip or click on uh, one of the states here to locate the MNIE. I'm going to go back to, for example, um, on Las Vegas you would come down a little scroll a little further down on the lodging is listed first and below the lodging you'll see the MNI rate. Uh, expand that out and it's broken down uh, with your total plus uh, broken down into your incidentals and you have your first and last, double tra uh, last travel date already calculated for you at that 75%. So you can take those numbers once again return over to your uh, calculation here. So I had $61 was my full rate day for Las Vegas. $45.75 was the first day rate. And my last day rate. So if I had only two half to uh, first and last day, my total would be $91.50. If I stayed a full day in between those two days, it would be $152. Again, if a meal was covered, I can look at the breakdown, which back over here would be, uh, again, the let's say they provided a dinner, just $26 and a lunch. So I can come back to my little calculation sheet here. And here is my uh, $16 for my lunch and $26 for my dinner that was covered. So I need to reduce my reimbursement by $42, which I would enter in on the less meals provided line, which is a new line on this form. Again, if you have any questions regarding the changes in the reimbursement for both MNIE and for lodging for your travel, 
uh, please contact the purchasing office. We'd be happy to explain these changes uh, and how they will affect your reimbursement. And we wish everyone happy and safe travels on your business trip.